Awesome. So who, what do we got? Tech services, huh? Why not? All right. Dan gave us five slides, and uh, uh, we boiled all of ours down to three. I hope that's acceptable, wow. Dan. And, and the first you one doesn't sick. count. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just sit uh, uh, here, and, since we're a smaller group, and, and uh, just make it more informal. But uh, yeah, tech services, uh, uh, is, as we move to the, the next slide, whoever's uh, controlling it there, uh, um, the, the who we are uh, is um, we're an organization uh, that has, has worked hard in, in the region here and within the state of Illinois to uh, design and, and implement and, and help support uh, digital uh, uh, literacy as well as basic uh, literacy programs uh, uh, around the state. Um, as well as uh, working within communities to help them uh, uh, implement and support uh, technology, whether that's through a, a, a public uh, computing center or a, a community technology center. Um, uh, at, at we have uh, partnered, again, with uh, uh, the Chamber uh, through Peggy Luce o over a number of years uh, now. Um, 15 years, I guess it's, it's, it's been <laughs> uh, in, in designing education uh, programs, uh, uh, again, delivered in school or, or out of school, as well as workforce development programs for uh, dislocated workers or even incumbent workers that uh, maybe need to be reskilled to retain their employment or to advance in, the, in their employment. And we do uh, as well uh, work in, in uh, the enterprise area in, in designing and in, uh, implementing and supporting uh, various uh, systems, whether those are application-based or network security uh, and, and so forth. And, and we are uh, active in community and economic development uh, as well, looking within uh, neighborhoods or, or uh, larger geographic areas to uh, uh, help promote uh, uh, job opportunities, uh, new business development, entrepreneurship, uh, in, in, and so forth, and uh, working with uh, various state agencies uh, um, and, and local uh, agencies as, as well. So that's a, a synopsis of, of who we are and what we do. Um, based on, on our experience, and, and I'm, I'm going to talk uh, uh, on the next slide about where we see uh, opportunities for collaboration. Um, uh, while we do an awful lot, and there's there's needs and things that, that we have as, as an organization, uh, we see the biggest opportunities for collaboration based on our observations it, it, and collaboration on, on how do we leverage technology more in in the environments that, that we work in. And, and uh, one of the biggest things that, that uh, we see is, is standardizing goals and, and metrics. When we talk about digital literacy, for example, that means something different to everybody that, that you talk to. And then, how do you, uh, uh, you know, how do you achieve digital literacy? Again, that means something different to uh, just about everybody that, that you talk to. And so, it's really hard to um, uh, sustain uh, uh, these types of, of efforts when you don't have standards that everyone is working towards. And it's hard to fund uh, on a broader scale uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, uh, when we don't have standards that we're all working towards. And that doesn't mean that everybody does 100% exactly the same thing, but at least those, those core metrics that, that we're working towards, those core goals, if we can standardize those, uh, I think uh, we can see a lot more sustainability of a, of a lot of things that kind of start and stop. Um, uh, you know, when uh, the, the uh, Broadband Technology Opportunities Program funding ran out, 99% of the activities stopped. Uh, because there wasn't really any common sustainability that, that had been built in uh, uh, being fueled by uh, standard uh, metrics and, and goals. Uh, so I, I, we see an opportunity to collaborate on standardization. What are we trying to achieve together and how are we going about measuring that and then how do we sustain that, whether that's through funding or uh, through uh, uh, other programmatic uh, efforts. Uh, one of the other things that, that we see is, is reliable uh, technology support for community-based organizations. Um, most uh, organizations uh, survive day-to-day -day, uh, because they're very lucky. Um, Ray and I visited earlier this week a, an organization that has, has been um, living off of, of an environment that I don't know if you've ever seen um, some of the uh, wiring within some of the cities in, in uh, India. 
you know, no, no, uh, uh, you, you know, no animosity towards <laughs> what they're doing in India. But if you've ever seen how everything is spaghetti cable between buildings and along the roadways and everything, uh, this this organization, uh, that's how they were cabled. And, and it, if a problem happened, it would take the guy responsible for figuring it out all day to solve one little issue. And um, and that's not because he wasn't working hard. <laughs> It's because he really didn't know how to even clean that up. Um, uh, he didn't know how to, to, to plan things out to segment networks so that he didn't have to buy a whole new internet connectivity for a, uh, a functionality within the organization. They wanted accounting split off from everybody else. So their solution was, OK, you have to have a totally separate network. And now you have those costs. You have the support issues and, and so forth. So reliable technology uh, uh, support uh, uh, as a standard across C CBOs, we see uh, an opportunity for uh, cost savings. We see an opportunity for being able to leverage more technology. Again, we see many uh, uh, CBOs who really can't afford to invest in the technology they need. But if they were to partner with other similar CBOs, uh, uh, they could access uh, the technology, pool their resources, access the technology that they, they need, whether that's in combined licensing or whether that's in um, uh, co-locating within a data center, uh, it's saving costs, uh, saving, you know, getting good enterprise level support. Uh, we see uh, uh, many uh, uh, CBOs that uh, have a database, what they call their database, which is a distributed uh, set of spreadsheets across any number of uh, workstations with versions that no one knows which is the correct version. And someone comes in and overwrites uh, someone else's changes because they they don't know uh, which version is the live version, and and there's no uh, real database controls. Um, being able, uh, there's a lot of uh, hard work that is done because a lot of the the CBO staff don't know how to use technology uh, effectively or. They don't know what's available. We just talked to an organization that was said, boy, we'd really like to get to census data, Dan. And oh, we go, yeah. oh, yeah, guess what? There's a meetup coming up yeah. just about uh, you know, census data and, and how, to, how to map that. It, it, and they don't know that those things are readily available to them. Um, so we, we really see a, a great opportunity here in Chicago uh, to, to put in uh, a real uh, uh, enterprise level type of support across CBOs and make that available uh, uh, to them so that um, they're not just talking to their, their local support who knows what they know, but they don't know what they should know. Yeah, and again, we uh, Ray and I were at an or organization uh, earlier this week uh, as well. And, and you, we ask, how much bandwidth or, or, you know, do you have within you know, coming into your organization? And they said, well, we're running on a 100 megabit. Well, OK, that's, that's nice. But the real question is what? Is it about his local bandwidth, or is it about his internet bandwidth? Is you know, broadband is what we were talking about. And, and then we say, OK, you've got AT&T, right? What's the bandwidth we're getting? And he, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't know how to in, interpret it. And that's not a bad thing. You know, if he if he doesn't need to know, but at that point in time, we needed to know in order to, to provide him with good recommendations. And um, uh, folks don't know, uh, we were at an organization who was looking to upgrade their technology, and their solution was to buy new motherboard, new hard drives, new RAM, new power supplies, and put it all in the shell of what they existed, and they would save the cost. They would, they, they would save costs. Well, when you added all those costs up, it was more than what it would cost to buy brand new and have the warranty of, of a brand new uh, device and, and uh, not have the effort of, uh, uh, you know, have the cost savings in time as well uh, in, in not having to uh, build the, the, those units. Uh, and again, that it wasn't that that was a bad idea. It's just that they didn't know how to really compare uh, a cost and, and how to look at um, you know re reliability and sustainability. Um, the uh, third bullet point that we have in, in opportunities for collaboration is, is the real integration of community workforce and economic development. There's a lot of talk about how that is, is integrated, but when you actually um, uh, get out and work in it, uh, they are separate uh, uh, areas of, of uh, effort. 
and a lot of duplicity, a lot of things that are going on in community development that uh, are also going on in economic development, but in, in the exact same block <laughs> of the city, but they're not working uh, cooperatively. Same thing with workforce development, uh, a lot of economic development that's going on that doesn't have workforce development uh, setting alongside of it to, if we're looking to attract certain businesses, are we preparing the workforce within those communities to take those jobs uh, on? Uh, there's a, uh, here in the near west side, there's a, a very large um, uh, uh, organization that, that's uh, going to be starting up there uh, um, uh, dealing in, in uh, uh, produce distribution. And they're having to look outside of the community to bring workers in because uh, the workers in, in the area don't have the, the skills. Uh, so instead of working with workforce development uh, to to uh, uh, provide a solution for those folks uh, there, they're they're pulling people in from outside. That's, that's more effort on their part from a recruiting standpoint, um, and it, it's not supporting the, the local community. So we, we see an opportunity uh, for collaboration across those three areas and, and really uh, pull them together and, and uh, end up with with larger uh, results. Capacity development is, is the last thing that we put up uh, here. Uh, many uh, uh, organizations that we've worked with are, are working at their capacity, um, and, and a lot of them are working to keep the lights on. Um, they, they come in every day to, to get the, the work done, to get the, the funding, uh, you know, to fulfill the funding that they have in front of them, and no one's looking at what happens when that program <laughs> uh, ends. And, and uh, there's, we see a need for uh, capacity development to, to help folks look beyond today's uh, workload and, and effort, um, whether that's in board development, whether that's in uh, 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 good business processes uh, within within their environment, that could be uh, uh, you know, funding development uh, uh, as well, and, and it's also uh, training of, of staff, uh, again, whether that's in technology or, or in good business practices uh, there so that uh, within the region here, we can actually do more without um, uh, without having to uh, tax the current capacity that, that, that we have. So those are the, the four areas of opportunities for collaboration that, that we see and, and uh, uh, we'd be uh, certainly happy after, you know, after we get to the end of the conversation here to, to talk more to those. So I hopefully... Awesome. Well, it's only three slides. Just five. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>